Hey everyone, welcome back to another Autodesk Fusion tutorial. Today we're going to do something similar that I've done in a different video, but my wife needed a cap for this butt paste. It's all busted. I'm sure one of the kids dropped it. And I'm just going to 3D print one, design and 3D print one. So I'm going to go over how to measure these threads how to design it in Fusion and then 3D print it. And then at the end, I'll print it out and we'll see how it works. So we're gonna need four measurements and I'm not gonna measure this on camera for you guys because uh, my setup is just kinda, I, I won't be able to show you very clearly. So, okay, you need something called the major diameter. The major diameter is just the diameter of the jar, including the threads. So you wanna measure from the tip of this thread to the tip of this other thread on the other side. So major diameter is diameter including the threads. The minor diameter is the diameter not including the threads. So you could do that a few ways. You could, you could either just take a diameter measurement and just with your calipers and just don't include the threads or once you have the major diameter, you could just come in with this part of your calipers and see how how thick or how how large those threads are and then subtract them from the diameter. You need the pitch of the threads and the pitch is just measuring uh, the point, the distance between the threads. Um, and again, you wanna get that as accurate as you can. And then of course we need the height of the cap and the height, I usually, this this bottom little lip here is not part of the threads. I usually try to make the cap uh, go from the top of the jar down to this uh, little lip. The lip is the same uh, thickness or the same, it comes out as far as the thread. So you're not going to run into this. Um, so uh, let's say this is like 12 millimeters from here to here. I might make the cap like 10 millimeters or 11 millimeters or something. So. Okay, so those are the four measurements you need, and I will grab those real quick, and then I'll meet you in Fusion. All right, so here in Fusion, I have my measurements written down. This is just on a sticky note for Windows, um, so it'll disappear as I click off it, but I have my major diameter, minor, pitch, and height. So we're gonna create a sphere, not a sphere, a cylinder, and the cylinder is gonna have a height of 13, and a diameter of 88.5. And the reason I'm going 0.5 is I'm gonna give myself a 0.25 millimeter clearance. So let's create the cylinder. Start in the middle here, and remember we're gonna go 88.5 for the diameter and 13 for the height. And now this represents the inside area of our cap. So now let's create those walls of our cap. We're gonna to go to shell. And typically when you open up the shell tool, it's gonna to be set to inside, meaning it's gonna shell out towards the inside, but we wanna shell out towards the outside. So it's actually gonna create the walls on the outside of this uh, cylinder. So let's select our face here, change this to outside. And now we're just gonna put in our wall thickness, which I'm gonna use 1.8 millimeters. And if we did this right, this diameter should be 88.5, and the height between these two edges is 13, which is exactly what we want. So let's create some threads next. So we're gonna create threads using the coil tool, and the one thing we have to remember is the pitch is 4.75. So let's go to create coil, it wants you to select the surface you want to start the coil on, which will just be the top of the thread or the top of the lid. We'll drag over to that inside area. Okay, so when you open coil tool up, I have some things changed because I've used this in the past. It'll almost certainly be set to revolution and height. So I'm just gonna start there. And we're gonna make a new body for the coil. The section size is just the diameter of the coil itself. So we're gonna just set that to, we'll just say two millimeters. The revolution, um, one thing I didn't mention or show in the video earlier is that there was 1.25 uh, 
uh, revolutions on the jar. Now you can make this as many revolutions as you want as long as it has the same pitch. And we know the pitch was 4.75. And the reason I put a negative there is because it's going down instead of up. So if I, if I took this negative sign out, now you can see the coils going up instead. Um, now, we are gonna do something a little different. This is asking for the height, not the pitch. And for this to work, we would have to keep this at one because for one revolution, there's a height of 4.75. But if we wanted 1.25 revolutions, we would have to multiply this 4.75 by 1.25 and then put that into the height. But we can just go up to here and do revolution and pitch instead. And so now we can do a pitch of 4.75 and we'll make that negative so it goes in the right direction. And there we have our revolutions and our pitch. So I'm gonna not keep this as a circle. There's a few other things you can do and I'm not gonna get too deep into this. Um, I'm gonna do an internal triangle and we're just gonna do on the inside. So that's just making the shape of these coils a triangle and it starts on the inside of this surface. And we're gonna hit okay. Now let's move these threads down a little bit. We're gonna have to do some adjusting. So I'm gonna select that body, hit M for move. Let's just move it down, oh, I don't know, three, three millimeters, looks good. Okay. So let's go back to our measurements. We have a major diameter and minor diameter. And remember the major diameter was the, basically the size of the jar, including the threads, which means for this cap to fit on, this diameter right here has to be greater than the major diameter. The minor diameter was the jar not including the threads, which means this diameter of the inside of this thread here, triangle, cannot be smaller than 85.25 because not, then the lid won't fit. So we're gonna create some, a sketch with some construction uh, lines to give us a guide of how we can adjust this. So let's just do an offset plane from this surface and we'll just come up, where, where you put it doesn't really matter. I just wanted it above the lid. Let's create a sketch. We're gonna change this to a construction line and we're gonna hit C for circle. And we're gonna start in the center here and we're just gonna type in 88.25 and hit enter. We're gonna do another circle and we're gonna do 85.25 and hit enter. So if we zoom in, we can see that, remember this is the major diameter and this is the minor diameter. And actually I tell you what, let me zoom out. Let me just finish sketch here. We're gonna make this a little easier to visualize. So remember we kept the threads as a new body. So let's hit A for appearance on the keyboard. We're just gonna go down to plastic. We're gonna put some color on this model. Changing a few things here. Let's make the threads like a reddish color. It doesn't really matter, I guess. We will duplicate this and we'll make this like a, like a bluish color for the jar and hit close. So let's go to that top view here and zoom way in. So if you remember what I said earlier, this is the major diameter, so there's our 88.25, and if we click on the interior edge of the lid we're making, that's 88.5. So we have a 0.25 clearance here, but now look at the threads. Here is the minor diameter, which is the diameter, the outside diameter of the jar not including the threads, and our thread of the lid goes past that which means physically this lid will not fit on this jar. These threads have to be on this side of the line. And if we're keeping our tolerances or our clearance uh, equal, you'd want about 0.25 millimeters here. And we're just gonna kind of guess at that. But what I'm gonna do is click on this line here and I'm gonna chamfer it. 
And let's get back into that top view. And let's just chamfer it by, let's just do like one millimeter and see what happens. And there you can see it went way back. So let's do less than that, maybe 0.75. Let's do 0.7. Six, I'm just kind of guessing here. And that looks pretty close. So this gap here looks pretty close to that. It doesn't have to be exact. And let's hit okay. Let's see how close we are. So we've got 85.25 here. Oh, and this is giving me the length. I thought I was gonna be able to get the, the um, diameter, but that's okay. We can visually see that's pretty close. So now we know for sure that these threads will fit on, on the jar. And even better, we've taken out that sharp point. So let's hide that sketch. We don't need that visualization anymore because we know everything should theoretically fit. So now let's do some cleanup and we'll get this uh, lid printed. So let's join these two bodies. So I'm gonna join this body with this body and hit okay. Now there's two ways you could ease these edges of the threads. If you're doing, if you're using parameters that you want to actually change values, you do not want to use this first method, which is just using the move tool. So you can hit M for move, make sure it's on faces. And when this face is selected, you can select this edge here, and then you can just simply rotate it. And it's gonna, th it's throwing me some crazy airs here. Let's just do 60, that's fine. Let's hit okay. And then there is our edge that's been chamfered, makes it a little easier. Now, probably the better way to do this is going to be just chamfer this. And so let's see, this the distance from here to here is 1.48. So if we select this edge, hit chamfer, I'm gonna go two distances. The distance going up is that 1.48. And then we can drag this distance really however we want. We'll just do something like that and hit okay. And there we go. So now we've eased over the edge of the thread. And now we just wanna add some chamfers to the jar itself just to make it feel a little better so there's not these sharp edges. So let's do the chamfer tool again. Um, the first chamfer, we'll just do this edge and this edge, and we'll go back to equal distance and we'll do a one millimeter chamfer. Instead of hitting okay, let's just chamfer more edges in the same box here. So you can hit a plus. Once you hit plus, it shows you what edges have already been chamfered. So I wanna chamfer this edge and this edge, and we'll just do maybe like 0.2 just to ease it over and hit okay. So, I believe that's it. So what I'm going to do is send this to the printer and the next part of the video will just be me taking it off the printer and showing you how it fits. If it does not fit, um, we will discuss what needs to be changed. And actually I'll probably discuss that anyways, but uh, we'll jump to the printer now. Okay, so here is the lid right off the printer and my jar, and we can just get my threads lined up here, and it screws on. Now this feels a little tight to me. It, it did screw on nice and uh, flat, I guess you'd say. It's, you know, it's not crooked, which means we, we got our threads, uh, the pitch right. But it does work, but it is just a little height to screw on. I'd like there to be just a little bit more clearance there. And it's going to be hard to show because I don't want to dump this butt paste out, but it kind of seems like when I just start these threads and I and I look up through the top, it just seems like there's not enough space between the major diameter and the inside of this lid. So I, I think um, we'll head into Fusion and we will change some things. Okay, so we're back in Fusion, and what I was trying to say in that video, if we turn on this sketch and go to that top view, basically it feels like there's not enough clearance here between the major diameter and the inside of this lid. So I think what we can do is 
on our timeline go all the way back to the beginning here. And instead of making this 8.5, let's maybe make this 88.7. And we will hit OK. And now that should update everything. It looks like there are some errors here. So there's an error on this chamfer. What's, what's my chamfer doing? So it looks like there was an error right here. Let's just redo this. I think this was like 1.48. Ooh, let's hit cancel. Let's see. We're gonna have to do a few other things. This is actually a good reason why making things parametric is, is sometimes the right way to go because we could just change the parameters and everything would update. So it looks like these, um, the threads in the, in the jar um, aren't connected. So let's go into that coil tool and make sure we need to update this. So the diameter's at 88.5. We need to make this 88.7. So we'll hit OK. And now we're back to one body. So because we increased the, the diameter of this inside, we had to go back and increase the diameter of this coil. And now we've updated um, everything. And uh, going back to parameters, I won't get too far into this. You could add a parameter and just and just name it uh, you know, diameter, whatever, and put your diameter in here. And then when you are adding in your uh, cylinder diameter and coil diameter, you can just type that in and everything will update. But this wasn't too hard. So basically, I just increased the diameter of the inside of this lid by 0.2 millimeters. And so I'm going to print this again. And you could bump it up more than that. Now, there's a few other things you might want to look for. Uh, when you're deciding what to increase. Um, it could be that the inside diameter here of this lid is too tight, so you might want to increase that. It could be that the height of your threads are, are too tall, which is why this um, is, is so important. You might need more clearance here. Um, it could also be that the width of these threads, so from here to here, is maybe too wide to fit between the threads on the jar. So these are all things you're going to have to look at and then modify. But we got pretty close on that first time, first try. I mean, it it definitely fits and it definitely works, but I would like this to be just a little looser. So I'm going to print this again and I will show you the print afterwards. Okay, so I have the second lid here. Here's the first one in red. The second one, I started printing in red and I ran out of filament, so I switched to orange. And let's see how it works. Way, way nicer, way easier. So just changing that 0.2 millimeters of clearance made a huge difference. There we go. And that is how you create a lid for butt paste. Thanks for watching.